in the audience. This is exciting. I'm switching it to gallery view so I can see all the champions out there. We've got some people, uh, a lot of happy cookers, of course. We've got uh, some people that are hungry. Who's hungry for knowledge here, ladies and gentlemen? Raise your hand. If you are hungry, yes, you've got, you get the desire to learn, to grow, and to build your business. We've got uh, some people from Master Direct, Master Direct all the way from Oahu. Good to see you all. Zest Ballet, Cooking for Health. We got some Kitchen Logic. We got some corporate bigwigs here. We've got uh, Mr. Luis and uh, Mr. Bart are is on the call here today. We've even got some friends from the East Coast. It is like 11 o'clock. Talk about a commitment to excellence. Look at this. We've got the Hungry with Grace crew. They're, they're live as a, as a team. Look at that. Keep your, keep, here's the rules of engagement, ladies and gentlemen. Keep your camera on for the next 90 minutes. If you don't have a pen, grab a pen. A dull pencil is better than a sharp mind. Make sure you're ready to capture this information. Have your phone ready for screenshots because guess what? We are compressing this information, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because you're going to take it and you're going to internalize it later with your study buddies. The topic today is closing eloquently. What the choice of the word eloquent. What does eloquent mean? Well, it's kind of like a dance, ladies and gentlemen. It's a chance to dance. Closing, in most cases, people think is usually being uh, pressure, being trying to be overly aggressive or persuasive. No, that's not the style we're going to teach here today. We're going to teach you so many little things that will stack up like little tiny weights that will make the difference and more people will be saying yes with less effort, more consistently. So if your closing rates right now are one and two, fantastic. You can get a little bit better than that, but uh, you know what? What you're gonna learn here today is how you can apply this in the training, how you can develop your people, how you can use systems to build your business better and more profitable. So with that being said here, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? I think, Teresa, we have an on-time draw, right? For all the early birds here, we're gonna do a quick little spin the win on the wheel. What are we giving away, Teresa? It's a pair of kitchen shears, one of my favorite all-time favorite premiums in the wonderful world of Salad Master. All right, round and round it goes where it stops. Nobody knows give it a spin. knowledge the question is does she deserve the gift does she deserve the gift going once going twice yes of course she does all right so uh congratulations there guy and company so i'm going to start off ladies and gentlemen before i get into the meat and potatoes of things we will be doing a screen share uh there will be a assignment at the end of this event that you each and every one of you want to take advantage of as a quick summary our class our first class was really on the most important part of your business, and that is booking. Booking uh, dinners from dinners, booking from your warm market, booking first generation through prospecting. Then we segued into presenting, uh, how to present persuasively. And uh, my question to you is, have, did you review? Okay, by the way, I see a lot of people without their camera on. It means they're either in bed sleeping, okay, or they're multitasking and they're getting less than 10%. Now, there are people on this call that make $1,000 a month, and there's people on this call that make $1,000 a day. The people that are students and engage through this process will learn more and earn more. So my challenge to you is be engaged for this 90 minutes. It's 90 minutes of your life that could change your life. Keep your camera on and your pen ready. So have you applied it? Show of hands. Yes. How have you applied it? Okay, have you role played it? Yes, you reviewed your notes. Did you make power notes on those notes? Did you get connected with a study buddy and role play to integrate this information? Because knowing it is different than speaking it and speaking it is different than speaking it on purpose and with passion, okay? So um, that's the challenge we're gonna leave you with all today is align with a study buddy and always align yourself with somebody a little bit better but you get challenged. But before we begin here, I have a, a quick little share from uh, one of the top distributors in the world. In fact, she comes from the wonderful world of happy cooking, May and Don Gonzalez. 
we're the number one personal sales distributor within our region. They're also IWC. They've been number one IWC in group and personal as well, too. So they are true champions. And just when you think you can't learn anymore how the power of a study buddy can work. So may, if you can just do a quick little share about how you've applied study buddy and some of the benefits that you've received from that. Take it away, May. You're muted. Okay, I think Teresa, you need to ask to unmute. Okay, you you can't talk. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to our mastery training. First and foremost, James, I really want to thank you for all your effort to or efforts to sharpen all of us. So uh, we, I really, really appreciate it. And we're just here to apply what we're going to learn tonight. I mean, I love the topic of closing because even after four years, I know that closing will really seal the deal for us. So uh, on Proverbs 27, 17, okay, since we're talking about study buddy, it says there that iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. So that verse alone tells us that we cannot do it alone. We cannot really sharpen ourselves by ourselves. We needed someone to be with us. So James asked me to share about this study buddy. And uh, truth be told, at first, I didn't, um, I didn't grasp or the, I didn't really grab rather, I didn't really grab the opportunity to look for someone to uh, be a study buddy. And uh, I'm so thankful that uh, there's this couple that was uh, looking for a study buddy and by the name of John and Josephine Sarzosa. Okay. And right now I'm just so proud to see them like, um, you know, flying so high. And one thing about this couple is they're hungry to learn. So right now I have four study buddy in total, five, including my husband. And of course, who is a better study buddy but your partner, right? You're with him almost 24-7. You don't even need to make an appointment. So just make it a regular thing. And one thing that I know, whoever your study buddy is, you will learn something from them, okay? It can even be an accountability partner, a study buddy accountability partner, someone that would make you do the things that you don't really want to do, but it will help you, okay? Okay. So one thing that I actually learned as we were doing this study buddy is that Josephine and John have only been in the business since February, I believe. But every time we do a study buddy, I also learn something from them. One thing that I got from this couple is the tenacity, that the tenacity, that no is not even a part of their vocabulary, okay? They want to create change in themselves. And with that behavior, I want to have that too. And then the other thing that it taught me is I have another study buddy, Sarab, who's been in the business for a long time. And the one thing that I learned from her is that it's okay that, you know what, we put uh, value in ourselves. But if that if people are not valuing us, then it's okay for us to find someone, uh, some other people that will value us and our shows. Okay. And the other thing too is that we should never think that because we are more senior than the other one that we are with study, uh, study buddy with, we're not going to learn from them. I learned so much from all those four people that I actually study buddy with. We even incorporate devotion. We even incorporate prayers because it strengthens us. We know that uh, this business is amazing. It's life changing for the ones that we cook for and for the and for us and for our families. But we need all the strength that we can get. And again, we cannot do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Every day or every moment that you can get, you can find someone to talk to. Okay, it doesn't have to be that regular person that you do study buddy with. Trust me that you're going to learn from them one way or another. There's another group that's been doing study buddy and that's AJ and uh, Teresa. And I saw how AJ soared so high because of the effort that uh, Teresa and her put together in doing study buddy with. The other couple, the other, not couple, but the other study buddy partners that I am just so amazed is Regilin and Carney. 
they are so consistent that it brought like uh, 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 what do you call this uh, that it brought um, discipline with me that I that uh, the consistency will also help me nice. and of course uh, my other consultants Sharon and Glenda who are very very consistent and I saw how much this is helping them grow so to close it up number one trust that this study buddy okay will help you will help the other person that you're with and according to Henry Ford Coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. So enjoy the rest of our night. Thank you, James. Thank you, May. Um, uh, we, we a lot of recognition going on there for the study buddy crew. So I think the message is pretty clear. If you're not study budding with somebody, it is an opportunity to learn, grow, contribute, sharpen your skills, and build your business faster. So uh, the topic again, ladies and gentlemen, is closing eloquently, and it is a science of communication blended with the art of people skills, okay, and your genuine interest to, to help others. And so um, let the games begin. What is the secret to become a master, uh, master closer? It is a quality demo in front of quality people. Q quality demo, quality people gives quality results. So if you do a great demo in front of the wrong people, you're not going to get great results. If you do a poor demo in front of the best people, you're, you're going to get poor results. So you need to have both of those. And we're going to talk about that today. We always want to be cooking and applying our knowledge. And when we're cooking, we want to have the ABCs. We want to always be closing. That's correct. Now, talking about quality prospects here, ladies and gentlemen, I think most of you know the basics of a champ. We're not gonna get into couples that are health conscious, age demographic, money demographic, purpose driven. We know those things. What I wanna impress upon you is opportunity seeker. Become honed towards looking for talent. So if you ask for it, you receive it. If you coach your hostess for the right people, you're gonna get more of the opportunity seekers. Why? Because these are the people that are gonna nibble and bite on the stock program. They're gonna love it. Okay, so maybe they've got some background in direct sales or MLM. Um, maybe they're just very social and they have a lot of friends. Okay, <clears throat> maybe they're just looking uh, to embrace a mission passionately. So our high probability prospects, ladies and gentlemen, yes, they're the chance, the health conscious people that cook, but they're also the people that are opportunity seekers. So asking shall receive. Let's talk about low probability. You got to know what you want. You also got to beware of what you don't want. Lower probability is if, if somebody is, you know, laid off or disability. Now, how do you say it in such a way so you don't offend the person that might be referring? Because you don't want to look like you're discriminating. Of course not. But you don't want to tease people. You know that when you do the cooking show and they fall in love with the product, you know that they're going to want it. And if they really, because of financial limitations, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be something they're going to have to go home. They're going to have to cook on their cooker and they're going to feel bad about it. We don't want to do that to your friends. Now do it. If somebody is actually going through divorce, that is a change where the, the, the future is uncertain. If they're new to a city, they don't know a lot of people. If they're buying or selling a house, they may be getting into a new mortgage or uh, uh, unanticipated uh, uh, travel expenses or moving expenses. So these are some things that can increase the probability of no's taking place. Now you get one, maybe it's a yellow flag, you pay attention to it. Okay, but you get multiple, you definitely want to make sure that your time is used in front of the right people, people that are too young, people that are in the older demographic. I'm, I'm not saying that they don't invest, but you're going to have the lower end of the bell curve, you're going to have to get work harder for the results people with poor credit. How do you know if people have poor credit? Well, if you're in a home and the people don't qualify, you actually want to take the time to let them know that you want to be in front of people that, you know, are financially capable, financially established. And if you know they've had some hardship, we want to maybe wait for the future. Okay. Um, people that eat out, eating out, everyone eats out once a week or twice a week for social reasons. But if they're eating out five times a week, a majority, you know that cooking is not going to be as big of a priority and it's going to be more of a, a harder sell. Um, people uh, that don't speak your language, when does that come in place? Well, maybe you're in a, a specific ethnic group that uh, the people are bilingual, but the mom does the cooking and you can't communicate with her. Okay, so always make sure you have a booking partner or a trainee that can fill in the gap. You cannot translate a close. Let me tell you, I've tried. If somebody recently just 
but an expensive cookware. Now, a lot of our customers, about one third of our customers are people that, that own waterless cookware and people that already own a salad master. So there is a technique to be able to upsell them to the new technology. Um, people that are self-employed, I always ask somebody, oh, they're a business owner, great. How's business? How long have they been doing the business, right? Dig a little bit deeper. Sometimes, oh yeah, they have their own business. That could mean the, they're doing great or they could be doing, they're, they're not doing great, right? And of course, if they're with their, their spouse, right? We, we sell a lot of ladies and we allow a lot of ladies that, that do the show without their spouse. But again, these are things that reduce the probability. So what can we do at the beginning uh, in the invitation process to, to ask probing and qualifying questions? These are the three cardinal questions that I set a standard before I make a decision to go on any show. Number one, how do you know them? I wanna know the social influence. Number two, is what do they do for work? Again, financial qualification. And number three, why do you think they would be interested? Always get their opinion on the why because it fills in the cracks. The, I call these the vitals, right? The ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. If you ever take any, any sort of CPR type courses, we want to know the vitals, right? And the life that's going to come out of that show. So those questions, get those questions down, screenshot those questions, and apply those questions and set them as a minimum standard so that you have a connectivity to the prospective person you're going to be doing a show for. Now, if they're a booking partner or a team member already, you can be a little bit more blatant with your questions. I want to know who do you think is going to be interested in getting a set? <laughs> and who do you think might be a potential team player and why? Okay, always the why, because you know what, you're quantifying what they're saying because they may be new and they don't know any better, right? <clears throat> and so their opinion may not necessarily be the same as yours. So at the show, when we're at the show, we continue to qualify. Trial closing is a, is a qualifying process as we get through the show. But at the beginning, we wanna to get to know the people, uh, the family and the occupation. When we talk about family, um, uh, there's their spouse, we're, we're talking about their children, their grandchildren, and they feel connected. That's also rapport building. What they do for work, how long they done that for, do they like what they do? Do they see themselves doing that five years from now? Okay, recreation, what do they like to do for fun? And motivation, what is there gonna be their motive? Okay, we'll talk about motive, but is it time savings, money savings, or health benefits? Now, persuasion rules, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So persuasion is not pressure. Persuasion starts with your conviction and your belief, and you must have enthusiasm, meaning enthos, right? God within, and I-A-S-M. I am sold myself, right? That's enthusiasm, ladies and gentlemen. You have to be sold yourself. You have to use the product. You have to explore the product. You have to get passionate about the product. I remember when in my beginning days when I first started the business and I blanked three or four shows in a row and my manager would go, go, when's the last time you open up the cookbook and cook something new? And I'd always get fired up and excited after I did that. Now, customer, you, customer must believe that you're not there to sell them a product, but you have their best intentions in mind. When it comes down to the end of the show and they're deliberating between the set and they ask you the question, what do you recommend? You know you've got rapport because they're asking for your advice on which way to go. Now, customer must believe the benefits of a product are more valuable than the cost of acquiring it. There is a cost, right, to acquire it, but the benefits must outweigh the cost. They need to believe that sincerely. I tell people, if you want to sell a chef set, you got to do a $20,000 show, okay? If you're doing a $2,000 show and you're trying to sell a $5,000 set, it doesn't work. You're going to get objections, okay? Sell what the customer wants, not what you want. Now, I have to say this because when, some, when a lot of people are new, they're very enthusiastic and they bought the product because they either love to cook or they're into health. That's usually the biggest hot button, right? And so when people go, I love to cook, I love to cook, I love to cook, and you're cooking for somebody that doesn't like to cook, they're going, well, this doesn't apply to me. So be very conscientious of not selling what you necessarily believe or what's a value to you, but what's a value to the consumer. And you must overcome objections an average of five times. According to Zig Ziglar, who pulled thousands and thousands of prospects, the average sale was closed, 80% of all sales after five closing attempts. Doesn't mean they're saying no, 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 but they're little stalls and little concerns and little questions, but they didn't just jump in and say yes, okay? I used to love those customers where they would just go, okay, give me the paperwork. I was like, hail Mary full of grace, 
Okay, those don't come too often, right? So you got to get comfortable with answering objections. You can't be pushy, but you got to ask for the order and you got to be persistent with it. Now, do not underestimate the power of social influence. And this is why one of the reasons why our dealership does so well on virtual is because we always try to get the booking partner or the referring hostess on the show and get a testimony and get them to edify you. It's part of that process, social influence. People respect what their friends say. And if they believe in a product, it's powerful. Now, here's the deal. If they want it, you must assume they're going to get it now. And the word we use, an urgency word, okay, we always incorporate now, okay? We want to use that a lot in our demonstration. So if they like it, you know they need it, okay? And affordability, nine times out of 10 is psychological. They bite on the, 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 the trial close, you assume the sale. Understand and respect other people's values and beliefs. One thing we do not talk about, and I don't recommend you talk about, is anything that's controversial on social media, do not necessarily talk about uh, religious or political things, which, you know, hey, somebody might be Christian, but they've got two opposing views, okay? And so just sometimes speaking in generalities is an easier way, or dancing the question is an easier way. So you don't break rapport, okay, by mismatching somebody's beliefs. And never ask a question at the end of the show. This is cardinal. Never, ever, ever, ever ask a question you don't know the answer to. Okay. In fact, when you're closing, it's just a summary of the, the information you already received previously in the demonstration. And if you don't know the answer, it's not yes or no, it's this or that. Okay. If in doubt, ask an either or question, this or that, this set or that set, this, this payment or that payment, this gift or that gift. Okay. Easy, easy peasy. And the most important priority is at the end of the show, the final sale is book another show get an instant booking, whether they buy or not. A champion always goes for the, the booking. That's the final close, ladies and gentlemen, is always getting another booking and being committed to keeping your employment for the next show, okay? Let's be honest, okay? Some of you have done this. You've, you've shopped, you've prepped, you've driven, maybe in traffic, you've, you've cooked for people, you've cleaned up the dishes, you maybe invested four to five hours um, with telephone uh, follow-up and travel, and then at the end of the show, they said they like it. They really, 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 really like it. And they know they need it. And they want to think about it. But they're booking a show and they're going to invite another couple over. So they're going to sleep on it. They're going to print. They're going to think about it. They're going to call you back. Okay. And then all of a sudden, guess what? They don't call you back or the show cancels. And then the sale doesn't push through. And then two months later, there's a, a road, road show at Costco. And they see this titanium. And they remember, I think titanium is good, but it's really a nonstick or they're at Macy's and it's 40% off and they go, it's shiny and heavy and they forgot half of what you said and they get another product. Who wins? Well, the customer doesn't win, that's for sure, ladies and gentlemen, okay? It's so important to be able to have the technique and the tactic and the skill set rehearsed, refined because you get the close ones. And the reality is here, ladies and gentlemen, there's people on this call that close one in six or one in five. I, I, there's no judgment on that because when I started in this business, I was a one in sixer. Okay. All right. But there's also people that are greater than one in two. And that's a difference, ladies and gentlemen, of 300% at the same commission level, 300% frontline business. But that's not even including the fact that you're training people and you're retaining more people and you're attracting more people faster into the business because success loves speed. And so if you can increase your technique in this area, your business can blow up, okay? So what we want to do is we want to discover what their hot buttons are and their hurt buttons. Their hot and hurt buttons. See, the hot button is gasoline and the, and the hurt can be the break. So we, we actually use both of those to be able to motivate people to saying yes to the product at the end. So the primary hurts, what are some things that are really, you know, here's the interesting thing. A lot of times the customer doesn't realize it's a problem or a hurt until you actually dig in with questions. When people have a problem, whether it be about health or financial, they don't brag about it. People try to forget their problems, avoid the problems. But here is the biggest problem. Convenience food, prepackaged foods, right? Drive-through foods, restaurant foods. 
these, this is one of the biggest problems that we face that we've got to convert people over. Health problems, all of the, the that we can list here. Um, limited budget is actually, some people say it's a hurt, but it can be the hot button if you dig properly with it. Because what we do is we discover the pain. You see, if you have a, 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 a little bit of a sore and you pull the bandaid off the sore, there's a little wound. And then you put a little bit of salt on that wound and you put a magnifying glass on that it actually feels a little bit pain. It doesn't mean that the wound's not there, it's always there. But when we expose it, it creates urgency to move towards the solution, ladies and gentlemen, and changing people's lives is the ultimate solution. So when we talk about the hurt, okay? And by the way, you know, that is human motivation, okay? A, a carrot and a stick, okay? And the, you know, we that's how we motivate ourselves. I'm not talking about manipulating people, I'm being very, very sensitive to people's wants and needs, okay? We discover their wants and needs in the lifestyle questionnaire. And the first thing is, I've seen people fill a lifestyle questionnaire and they just ask a couple surface questions, they throw it away. No, that is the roadmap. That is the blueprint to be able to helping and customizing the show and give them exactly what they want. They're giving you everything on a platter telling you exactly about themselves. So you ask the first question is, why do you say that? I'm digging Here's the answer, but what I'm digging for underneath the answer is their values and their belief systems. Once you dig that, those are the hot buttons and their hurt buttons, and you just press those buttons and boom, 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 okay? So why do you say that? And what about that is important to you? And how specifically? And when you're asking questions, don't ask questions like you're interrogating people. Ask questions like you're absolutely interested in helping them, if that makes sense. Once you discover the problem, ladies and gentlemen, on a virtual show, I love it. You could just write it all down and you could write it in the exact words that they say it. And then you feed it back in the exact words and it hits their ears. And like you're on, they go, their mind goes, you understand me. Okay. And that creates the connection. So once you get that information on the lifestyle questionnaire, you don't jump into it and start selling. No, that's what the amateur does. The pro actually puts that on the back burner, builds it into the presentation and uniquely delivers a demo that allows the product to sell itself. And at the end, people go, I can do this. You want to be a master builder? You don't be a pressure salesperson. What you do, ladies and gentlemen, is you do a great demo. You hit those hot buttons, let the product sell itself. We want to elicit their values. And the key ones we talked about, what's most important to you? Time, saving time, saving money, or improving health. Now, when we talk about time, right? Time, it really is our most precious commodity. And when we're dealing with upper middle income prospects, time is going to usually be a, a higher priority than health, even though like logically I'm supposed to say health because that's more important, they say, but that's not the lifestyle they follow, right? So if we're talking about time savings, we're talking about convenience, we're talking about ease, we're talking about simplicity, right? We're talking about coming home from work, frozen and finished, boom, 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 right? Money, uh, money savings, you know, who would that be? That might be what a uh, younger couple it might be single, single income household. It might be uh, retire on a fixed income, right? So you can anticipate these things, but they're going to give you the, the feedback when you ask that question. So when you ask the question, what's most important? Somebody goes all and you skip past it. Guess what? Shame on you. Why? Because you missed the point. It's not the answer is what's most important. We want to create the hierarchy, okay? Because my demo is going to be a lot different if somebody's number one goal, they go health, hands down, right? Or, or, or the wife goes, oh, time savings. The money goes, husband, they look at each other and they go, I don't know. Ask the question again. So John, are you saying that health is really the most important? Confirm their answer. Not, not necessarily, because sometimes people give you the answer they think you want to hear but you get those general values and it really helps put your show on the right path, okay? We know that people that are super health conscious are already easier to sell because that's a value they have instilled and they're pre-sold on the product, okay? Power statements, okay? When somebody says salad master is expensive, you go, you bet it's very expensive to make, but affordable to invest, to purchase. Right, you see, salad master is not expensive to buy. It's expensive to make. Why is it expensive to make? It's the materials and the craftsmanship. It's the materials and the craftsmanship. We're talking the finest materials available when we talk about the highest grade surgical stainless steel, the 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 multi clad full body construction, the polishing, and all the intricate details to be able to craft and create an end product that will last you every day for the rest of your life. 
Okay, so it's not expensive to buy. It's expensive to what? Make, that's correct. Okay, so um, another power statement. What's a power statement? These are things that you, you memorize as part of your rant because what they do is they annihilate people's opinion that it's a knee jerk, right? And so you, you come out strong, confidently. There's over a hundred manufacturing steps. So if you take the raw metal, uh, right? There's 60 manufacturing steps from the factory. But if you take the raw metal all the way through from ore to in the box, hundred manufacturing steps. Now, when we take just a look at that vapor valve, there's so many little intricate steps in them, right? What they, they do is they, they cut it, they press it, they polish it, the electrostatic spot weld, they do a downset on it. It's, it's even hand inspected. When we talk about the electric old core skillet, ladies and gentlemen, did you know that 30 people, 30, there's robotics and everything, but 30 real living human beings touch that pan. It takes 14 hours to press. They, they, they weld it. The, 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 the rim as well. And they, they inject the oil and they pressure test every single one. 14, now they make hundreds of them. 14 hours to make an electric skillet. My goodness, you know what? I believe it's underpriced. I am sold myself. Are you? Enthusiasm. Be enthusiastic on delivering the information. You see, sometimes people make notes and then they talk it out like a robot. No, you need to, to express it with enthusiasm, conviction, and passion. How we prepare the food is equally important as the ingredients. Okay, yes, it's important to be low fat, high fiber, nutrient dense foods, more veggies, less meats. We know that science shows that. But equally important, ladies and gentlemen, is the way we prepare the food and what we cook our food in. That's a total redirect. If you want to capture uh, people that are in the functional medicine, people that are in holistic health practitioners, people that are super health mind, they're going to go, you're absolutely correct. Equally important as the food we eat is the way we prepare it and what we cook it in. Yes, say yes. Do I hear yes? Some of you are listening, but are you writing? Okay, some of you have photographic memories. That's great. What's your cue points? Now, uh, with all the food and energy savings, can you see how Salad Master pays for itself every two to five years? Am I making a claim? No. I'm asking a question, aren't I? But isn't it true with all the efficiencies of the cookware? Okay, that and the savings, the daily, the monthly, the yearly savings compounded every single year. Can you see how it can pay for itself on an average of two to five years? You get a yes, guess what? That means the product's free. They, they invest in it up front, but the dividends, that's right, dividends, ladies and gentlemen, it's an investment that gives you dividends every day you eat for the rest of your life. Okay, we know the only real objection is money, ladies and gentlemen. And the ultimate way to deal with money is over time because you can reduce it to the ridiculous when it's a lifetime warranty, right? When they're using it for a lifetime, it's easy to break down the cost and the pennies. So here's my thing. The final statement. What does it say? Read with me. Can you, do you understand why so many people are what? Getting a set of salad master. If you don't say that at least three times in your show, you're missing the boat. Okay. Can you see why so many people are getting a set of salad master? Yeah. Can you see why this is the number one selling premium cookware in the world? Isn't this absolutely amazing? Aren't you excited about starting to cook this way also? That's an assumptive statement, isn't it? Yes. Okay. If the customer goes, does anyone buy this? If they ask a question, you're like, oh my goodness, I think I missed it. Name dropping. Again, this is social influence. Why do the people get, uh, why do companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars on celebrity endorsements? Because people think that if this celebrity or this musician or this athlete is using the product, it's going to be good, right? It must be good if they own it. So Dr. Neil Bernard, PCRM Food for Life program. Of course, those are people that are more plant-based. They're going to be uh, big fans of, of anything Dr. Bernard does. Dr. Dan Rogers. By the way, uh, here's a helpful hint. On brain health, uh, Dr. Dr. Bernard does a wonderful uh, TED talk on brain health. I think about 6 million views on it, but it really talks about amyloid plaque formations and heavy metals, uh, which can come from what? Water, according to Dr. Dr. Barnard says water and cookware can be a contributor of these things, which will create amyloid plaque formation. Dr. Dan Rogers, Gerson Institute, famous cancer therapy. Uh, Kathy Smith, 
um, who has sold more fitness DVDs and VHSs. Yes, Kathy is now, she's over 60, right? And uh, she's fit as a fiddle, but she's sold half a billion CDs and, and VHS. She is like the, the fitness queen from the 80s, okay? Proud owner of Salamaster, of course, okay? Um, Dr. Robert Young, anyone that's into al alkalinity, you know, they, they sell the alkaline machines or have an alkaline machine, they know who Dr. Robert Young is. He's the most famous pH, pH miracle for weight loss, pH miracle for diabetes, pH miracle for cancer. Great name dropper right there. Dr. Joel Furman, if you're from the East Coast, he's a huge celebrity in health and wellness. The, his most famous book, Eat to Live. Okay, proud, proud user of Salad Master. And we have testimonies of all these people. We're proud sponsors of ADA. And of course, the president of the ADA, Tracy Brown, proud owner of Salad Master. Any local practitioners, chefs, or nutritionists, and other people in the dinner chain who invested. So if you kind of know, I used to always go into a show and make notes. I'm going, okay, that person recommended, that person recommended, that person. And I'll go, yeah, this person got the chef set. This person got the master set. Okay. And they, they're going, oh, all these, they got it. They, they, they want it too, right? And so that is the power of social influence. So let's talk about committing questions, ladies and gentlemen. What are committing questions? They're getting people to think or say yes. With every presentation, according to Zig Ziglar, every seven statements that come through your mouth, you should ask a question because a question Isabel does what? It engages, doesn't it? It forces people to reflect on the information you just said. So do you like the food? So after you, you, sometimes you're in the flip chart, you're cooking, you're talking, and then while they're eating, you're like, what do I say? Okay, well, think about a, a waiter or waitress that comes up to you at a restaurant. They ask involvement-based questions like, hey, do you like the food, right? Everything tasting great, okay? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be great to cook like this all the time? That's a good one, right? Now, what are they doing? They're future pacing ownership, aren't they? Wouldn't it be great to cook like this all the time? Wouldn't it be great to have such easy, fast, delicious meals, just boom, like throw it in the pan, ready to go all the time, okay? And, and they're sitting down, they're eating, and they're like eating a second piece of chicken. You go, what impressed you the most? Oh, I like this, that, 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 this. And what's the tie down question? You know what it says. What does it say? Read it. Can you see why so many people are getting a sap? You like that? Okay, all right. And uh, next side on question is, can you see how you would save time? Now, if they told you the hot button was time, you say time. If they say the hot button was health, right? Can you see how this would really help in eating healthier? They say yes. And then here's the tie down question. When is now the best time to take care of your health? When is the best time to take care of your health? Say you just told you the answer, right? Can you see how you could save money doing this? Oh yeah, when's the best time really to start saving money? They go, well, I guess now. Can you see why so many people are getting a set? Now, I don't want to sound too mechanical. And I'm, 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 I'm training here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a real person. I'm not a robot. You with me? But we do sometimes have to be a little bit consciously competent and, and think about what we say. That's why it's so important to write this down and role play it because you're going, oh, that's a good one. And then you kind of get the concept, but it doesn't come out with enthusiasm because you're stuck in your head. Okay. No, how do you think you'd benefit if you had a set? I love that question, right? Now they're like, as soon as they answer it, what does it mean? It means they own, right? How would you, how would you benefit if you had a set? Now you go, James, that's kind of a sort of a redundant question. No, it's nothing redundant about it because it forces them thinking about ownership before they own. If they think about owning before they own, it makes it easier for them to say yes to ownership. Okay, now let's talk about price conditioning. We know you gotta get good, okay? I tell people, listen, five references to money during your show, okay? Because we want to abolish, we want to annihilate the money objection, okay? So when we talk about conditioning, it's like going in the gym, you condition a muscle. What you do is you condition so they understand that quality cookware is going to cost $3,000 to $12,000 or more, right? So what we can do is in the home, if you see a quality product, what am I talking? It could be a name brand product. It could be like the Louis, you know, the fancy purse or whatever. It could be a direct sales product. It could be a King and water machine. It could be a rainbow vacuum cleaner. It could be a Cutco knife. Pay attention. If you're in people's homes, pay attention to their shopping patterns. If, if a guy goes, hey, you know, you want to check out my, my garage and he's got a, uh, like he's building a hot rod or he's got all these fancy tools and stuff like that. I'm just listening. I'm just listening because guess what's going to happen? 
people are creatures of habit. If they bought something before in the past, there's a reason why they did it. So I, I agree. I, if I see the, uh, you know, you know, you see some of those cleanses that people buy from multi-level or some of the expensive vitamins, I see them on people's uh, refrigerator and I go, hey, I heard that's a great product. I see those, those uh, expensive oils, you know, the essential oils. I go, wow, that's a good one, isn't it? Now, here's the question. We are listening and value, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't mind me asking, what's the reason why you decided to get this? And be quiet and listen to their answer. So the answer they give you later in the show, what you want to do is just like you know, you're a person that likes to buy for your health. You're a person that likes to buy for quality, right? And just like you got that quality vacuum cleaner, you wouldn't ever want to consider compromising your health with the food that goes in your family's body, right? Don't you think that's at least as important, right? So um, really, we want to be able to take that value because people are consistent with their habits. In the flip chart in the beginning, brag about the price. Zig Ziglar says, if you have an objection, bring it up up front, okay? So don't skip that. Sometimes on the first generation people, people are pansy. They're walking on like their tippy toes, like they're walking on glass or something. No, open up, say, hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is number one for selling premium cooker. I want to let you know it's not cheap. You know, the average customer, our average customer is going to invest between about $3,000 and $12,000. I know what you're thinking. Can I get two sets? Ha ha. No, actually, the reason why so many people are getting is not because of the quality. It's, it's because of the many, many, many benefits that they get every day to eat for the rest of their life. You're talking about a 75-year-old brand that is backed by a lifetime warranty, a limited lifetime warranty that you can really be confident in supporting. So you really want to brag about that price up front, ladies and gentlemen. When you're doing the electric skillet demo, after you build tremendous value in that skillet, you shake the oil, you explain how it's hermetically sealed and it's guaranteed a lifetime immersible underwater and you fry that chicken. People are going, ooh, ah, oh, that is so cool. Drop the price bomb. We talked about this under uh, in the uh, presenting mastery, didn't we? Okay, so you know what, this, this skill is like $1,200. Okay, but it pays for itself on average in about three to five years in oil savings and energy savings. The best part is, is you can get this as a gift if you decide to get a set, even one of the smaller sets today. What are we doing? We're planting today, we're planting a free gift, we're planting the price. Okay, while people are eating, you know what, all this food costs $14. Can you imagine that? We're feeding a whole family of six for $14. You can't even go to McDonald's for that, can you? Right? Again, the people that are buying convenience food, you eradicate that objection. Um, the flip chart. We talk about it as a major appliance. The pot test. Oh, I love it. The pot test, ladies and gentlemen. This the, the magic of the pot test is not the blow sip. The magic of the pot test is not that terrible taste on people's tongue. Yes, it rattles them. It gets them to question the, 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 how good their cookware is or isn't for them. The magic of the pot test, ladies and gentlemen, is your pot test close, okay? Two reasons why, one reason why, number one reason why people buy is health. Number one reason why people don't buy is money. So what do you do? You do a story on the, on the, on the, on the importance of health and you do a justification on money. You do both of those. And if you do them in a story, guess what? Your closing rate goes up, okay? So the pot test close is the magic. A story on health, which is emotion, and a story on price justification, which is logic. You get the guy, you get the girl, boom, and you trial close it, okay? Now, lifestyle questionnaire, closing sheet. Uh, we're gonna talk about specifics of that, but one of the things is quantifying the food savings, right? It is estimated on University of Wisconsin to your independent study in the nutritional labs that they found uh, an approximate savings about 20% because of the cooking technique and equipment is more efficient and more economical, 20%. Now you could save less or more, I don't know, but that's an average. That's based on this study. Based on this study, that's $100 a month, that's $1,000 a year, that's tens of thousands of dollars in your lifetime. Now I've not met one person that's bought a set of salamis going, I'm buying the cookware because I'm gonna save tens of thousands of dollars. No, but in the back of their mind, they're going, yeah, and it pays for itself, right? They justify it like that, but you, you, it makes it easier for them to say yes when you crush that price objection, okay? And showing the sets, when we're talking about this, we're talking about renovating their kitchen. My favorite one is talking about a depreciating car. 
The average person in California where, where we are has two to three cars in their driveway. Average car is probably thirty to fifty thousand dollars. Depreciation is going to be ten to fifteen percent per year. That's five thousand dollars or more depreciation per car. Think about that. I'll tell you something. That is one of the most powerful closes of all because nobody can nobody can argue with that. You buy a car, right? And and every year it's depreciating an average of ten to fifteen percent, five thousand dollars per car. That's you got two cars. That's ten thousand dollars. That's a whole set. And you only have to buy it once. And I bet you, chances are in five to seven years, you're probably gonna get a new car. Wow. Justify, help them justify spending the money. They spend the money on this, or they're gonna spend it on that. Now, here's some health value stuff, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of my favorite stuff. How are we doing for time? We are right on pace here. In about another 10 minutes, we're gonna do a special drawing, Teresa. Okay, we're gonna do a special drawing only for the people with their their cameras on because I know with people with the cameras on they're serious contenders. Okay, uh, $1 of prevention saves approximately $3.50 in healthcare costs. You're going, James, where'd you get that stat from? This is a US study done, this Obama administration in 2012 to support healthcare reform. An ounce of cure, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. A dollar on prevention saves about $3.50 on healthcare costs. Big deal, right? Prevention saves money big time. Prevention saves lives. An evening in the hospital without a procedure averages about $10,000. Again, it could be more than that. A major surgery could be $100,000. A catastrophic illness, somebody uh, you know, gets cancer or something, it could be three hundred dollars to $800,000 depending on the procedure and how many rounds they have to take. What's my point? Yeah, the insurance covers some of that. But the number one reason for bankruptcy, ladies and gentlemen, is medical bills. Okay, so you don't you don't pay the price of good health. You enjoy the benefits. Write that down. You don't pay the price of good health. You enjoy the benefits. John D. Rockefeller, the richest man in his time back in the day on his deathbed, said he'd give back. He'd give back all his wealth to regain his health. What a learning experience from the richest man in the world. Now, we all have choices, ladies and gentlemen, and there's also consequences. Choices and consequences. So in Salad Master, this is the scale, ladies and gentlemen, you can either choose to cook your food the right way and preserve 93% of nutrition, or you can continue to cook the old-fashioned way and destroy 50 to 80% nutrition. Choice is yours, okay? You can get zero chemical reaction cooking on the cleanest highest grade surgical stainless steel, or you cook on a regular 1810 stainless steel or coated pan that can reduce, release chemical or metal or off gas into your food, okay? You can reduce your oils and fats by cooking in the right equipment by 75 to 80%, or you can be forced to use oils and heated oils, add unnecessary calories, weight, and clog the arteries. You can choose to cut your time by 50% by using the right scientifically designed cooking equipment, or you can be forced to slave. That's a consequence. Slave in the kitchen, pot watching, stirring, and scrubbing pans. Okay, choice is yours. Personally, ladies and gentlemen, if I didn't have a set of salad master, I'd eat raw foods only. Okay, I couldn't possibly imagine cooking on any other cookware. All right, what's your conviction statement, ladies and gentlemen? Little, little, little elements of conviction help tip the scales. Okay, so we've got a couple little chats in there. I'm gonna take a moment, see if I can answer some of the chat questions here. Um, are you sure? No, I made that up. Okay, uh, uh, nobody likes to be forced. That's right, Gina. Nobody wants to be forced to use their outdated cookware. That way you have a choice to choose, okay? You have a choice to choose, okay? How are self-employed a low quality prospect? Self-employed can be a great prospect, ladies and gentlemen. But what we do is when we hear self-employed, we quantify that by asking another question, okay? What do they do? What's their business? How's business doing? How long they've done that for? Are they a one-man show? Is it seasonal? Do they have staff? Yeah, they've got 200 employees. Okay, that's a little different than somebody that's seasonal self-employed, okay? Uh, what's the most important trial close? Are you ready for this one? Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Okay. If you were to choose 
Which way would you want to have your food cooked tomorrow? The old way or salad master? It's a three-step close, ladies and gentlemen. If you had a choice to prepare your food tomorrow, would you choose? Would you now choose the old way or salad master? Most people are going to say salad master. Can I hear an amen? That's right. Are you going to cook the old way or salad master? Okay, next question. What would be the number one reason why you'd want to invest? Oh, what a commitment statement. Okay. The old way or Salamis? Well, Salamis, what's the number one reason why you want to invest? Well, I guess health. How about you, Mary? Oh, well, definitely the time savings. It's so convenient. It's easy. Da, da, da. Great. So if a set fits your budget, you think you'd be interested. Please don't say, would you want to buy now? It's too strong. Okay. You want to get easy yeses. A lot of easy yeses building up to the final yes. If there was a set that fit your budget, you think you'd be interested? Yeah. Great. Shift gears and assume the sale. Let me show you how affordable your set will be. Let's have some cake. Boom. You assume the sale. So it's not a matter of whether they're going to get it or not. It's what size set fits their needs and their budget. Write that down. See, because sometimes the prospect is thinking, are we, are we going to get it? Well, it doesn't hurt to take a look. And I guess we're thinking about that. They've got all this noise going on in their head. And your job as a champion is to simplify it. It's not a whether you're going to get it or not. It's what size set fits your needs and your budget because everyone's thinking about what? Can I afford it? Am I buying too much? Am I buying the right items, right? Needs and budget, okay? So assume the sale, assume. So when we're closing sequence, now, ladies and gentlemen, see, sometimes for people, the close is kind of mystical. It's meaning like, what do I say next? What do I do next? It's simple three-step process. Choose a set, choose a gift, choose a method of payment, okay? Show the three most popular sets. Anything more than three, people get confused. Kiss, keep it simple. Chef set, master set, professional set. Now, somebody goes, well, I like the master set, okay? Are there pieces in the chef set that you like to? Okay, well, there is an in-between set. Did you want, do you want me to show it to you? That's an eloquent upsell, but get them to choose you know, a general one first to keep their, their uh, decision-making easy. Choose the gifts. Once again, just two or three choices, keeping it simple. Recommend. Before you get them to choose the gift, sizzle the gift, meaning explain the gift. Your demo sells the product, but what closes the deal is the gifts. They got to be hungry for the gifts because the gifts they get now, and that creates urgency. So sizzle the gift. When you're talking about, remember that electric skillet and you just get fired up with your energy? That oil, that oil core, multi-purpose five quart, you know, um, sizzle it, okay? And then ask which one they want. And then method of payment. So again, the three-step close, choose the set, choose the gift, choose a method of payment. So if I'm showing the brochure and I say, which set would you choose? They go, I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. What do you do? Don't jump to the gifts. Get the small commitment. Say, okay, I get it, okay? If you were to get it, what set would best suit your needs, what set would replace what you have in your cupboards? Ask the question again until you get the answer. Because if they say, I want to think about it, and you've not got answers to those questions, then what you're doing is you're making it harder for you to close, and you're making it harder for them to make a decision. Does this make sense? Choose a set. Get a confirmation and a commitment on the set. And by the way, your closing technique needs to be better when you're on a virtual. Okay. Okay, because there's a lot of people, they like it, but they want to think about it because we only got 90 minutes with them. Okay, so we've got to be good at our closing. Okay, so let me tell you about our method of payment. There's three ways you can get your set. Who set? Your set. There's three ways you can get your set. Number one, pay in full. You can get a gift, about $5,500. Then we have our monthly savings program. Sell the financing. It's easy. It's convenient. It's flexible. This is a recap for some of you. Okay. And you can earn our matching set program. Now, this is amazing. Get excited about the matching set program because guess what? Free. If I buy the set, and I get these gifts for free. And now I can earn a matching set. Guess what? All of a sudden, I'm just stacking more value on the purchase, aren't I? You stack so much value, it tips the scale on the money and people don't worry about the money. So sell that matching set program. Get excited about it. Okay. And ask them. All right. Which... If you were to get a set, which way would you choose? We're not sure we're going to get a set or not. I, I, I get that. But if you were to go, would you just pop it on your card, get some points, or probably take advantage of our monthly plan? You with me? Make sense? Of course it is. Okay. So who's learning something? Yeah? 
Who's learned one thing? Show of hands. Okay. Who's learned more than one? Look at all the people with the screen on. We have excited people. Do you know what time I got up this morning? I was so excited about the, uh, the opportunity to, to connect with you guys. I was up at 4.30 in the morning and I didn't even take a power nap. Normally I would take a power nap, but I was too busy today. So anyways, I'm excited and, and we want to make sure our energy level is at full throttle here for the, for the, the last third of this thing here. But uh, I'm excited to see who's going to be the winner, Teresa. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, let's give away an oval baked dish. It just gets better and better. Now, I know some of you are going to try to close me and say, James, okay, can I make a suggestion? How about we do a B pick or an A pick? How about we just spin a set? Yeah? Uh, Fa'an is like, yeah, 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 yeah. I like that idea. So, Teresa, are we going to spin to win? Or uh, you're putting together the numbers? I claim it. Yes, Victoria Belaine. I claim it. It's mine. In the chat box, ladies and gentlemen, while we're waiting for the spin, type in one thing that you learned here. One thing that you learn. Where do you start from the lowest set or the highest set? Quite frankly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't even get it. Like when I, I brush over the small sets, I go, yeah, this is like for single people, students, blah, 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 blah. This is the most popular set. Bread and butter is like a professional set. Um, but if you really, you know, you need some of the pieces for friends, if you have friends, do you have friends? So if you have friends come over, you know, uh, you want to choose that one. Okay, spin to win. All right. Oh, okay, is she still with us here today? Teresa, you got to double check. Is Meritess? Um, okay, we'll stop the screen share. All right, Meritess Corpus, is she in the house, Teresa? Is she, is she with us? Let me see. Okay, <laughs> so we've got a couple of questions here. If you uh, unmute, we'll mute you. Thank you very much if you unmuted. Um, the, what did you learn? It's uh, sell what they want, not what you want. Great, the quality of the demo in front of quality people. That was Mary Tess, so she is here today. Congratulations to you. Um, do you see why so many people are investing in Salamas? You don't pay the price, you could help you enjoy the benefits. And I learned more about the pot test. Assume the sale, that's right. So guess what? The best is yet to come here, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for the final finish? Say yes. Okay, you're muted, but that's okay. You're taking some of you are having too much fun. This is this is not supposed to be fun, is it? Okay, well, you're having fun, so that's a good part. Okay, so let's get into what happened here. Do you remember what page I was on? This is too funny. Okay, so we talk about ABCs. Okay, first call special. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So when we talk about the first call special, ladies and gentlemen, write this down. Read it. Read it. It's on the brochure. Okay. The first call special is a thank you. It's a bonus gift. See, our friend who invited you here today, she gets credit. She gets credit for, for inviting you. I get credit on my stock program. I get credit for my conscience for being here today. I get my friend, get your friend gets credit. I get credit and you're going to get credit as a thank you. I like to use that word. Thank you as a bonus gift for getting your set today. Right. You see, if I have to come back tomorrow to fill out your paperwork, I don't get another credit. All right. And the company doesn't give us another dinner show bonus. That's why today as a thank you, you get that $1,200 gift. Isn't that great? I'm so excited for you. Okay. All right. Now, um, no, so here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes people are going to say, hey, wait a second. So you mean to tell me if, if I don't buy tomorrow, like if I buy tomorrow, I'm not going to get this gift? Don't answer yes, don't answer no. Your response is the company, not you, the company offers this as a gift. Just repeat yourself as a thank you for you going ahead with your set today. I know you do whatever you like, but most, most people, they just go, man, I, I like it. And I want to start cooking on it. And I encourage you guys as well to do that, but that's up to you. Notice how we answer. We didn't answer the question. Just repeat it. Got it? So that first call special is the number one thing to eradicate. I want to think about it. Okay. Now let's talk about the key of upselling. Okay. We want to write this down. We want to help people get the largest set that fits their needs and their budget. Right. Ultimately, we want to replace everything in their cupboards. Okay. The, the set that the largest set, they want to get the smallest set but you wanna help them get the best value, get the largest set that fits their needs and their budget. Now, cleanse your kitchen. 
right? Replace everything in your cupboards. That's a strong upselling statement. By the way, don't say pieces because pieces is a downselling statement, right? Get the most complete set that replaces everything in your cupboard because the more you get, the more you save. The more you get, the more you save, okay? You want to get the right tool for the job, okay? So there's value and there's also function. When you fill the cookware three quarters full to full, there's less airspace. The heat source is closer to the food. It cooks more uniformly and it cooks much quicker. So if you're going to cook a big pot of food, use a bigger pot. Small amount of food, small pot. Don't put a small amount of food in a big pot because it's not as going to cook as efficiently. Smaller pans. Sometimes people say, oh, I don't use a smaller pans, right? Make a suggestion. They're great for side dishes and reheating, okay? You need them for storing leftovers in the refrigerator. Larger pans. You know, it's just the two of us now, okay? The kids are all gone. We don't really use the larger pans. We don't have any kids, okay? Well, you know, do you have friends over? Do you ever do potlucks? Do you ever, do you ever have gatherings together? Um, uh, do you ever do like a big fellowship potluck type of thing? And people go, yeah. Well, you know, when your friends come over, you don't want to serve the nasty cookware. You want to honor them with the good cookware. You like that, right? You don't want to, hey, if you only use it once or twice a month, what's once or twice a month? Think about that. 20 times a year, 200 times in the next 10 years, you're going to use this. You need it. Got it? So we're, we're taking the the using it once a week or twice a month or whatever, and we're building it up to hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times they're going to use it. So uh, you don't want to compromise on the health of your family and friends, right? Downselling. Sometimes people, they're stuck on the money or really financially, it's not the best time for them, okay? So we need to be empathetic, okay? And we need to be open to downselling, okay? Start on something, write that down. Okay, come on, guys. You know how important this is to you. You can't be cooking on that old stuff. Start on something. You know you need it. Okay, all the, ladies and gentlemen, that's not fancy words. That's just conviction, right? Start on something. Get the smallest set. It, you know, to me, it doesn't matter. You can always upgrade later. Write that down. You can always upgrade later. Now, there's a fine line on selling everyone the smallest set because that doesn't necessarily serve them. But if you have a customer that has a significant concern financially, psychologically or, or physically financially, okay, you can downsell. I would rather get one in the hand than two in the bush. I would rather get a personal or a classic written close than a promise to think about it and maybe get a master set tomorrow, okay? Because on delivery, you can always upsell. At the open house, you can always upsell. On your service call, you can always upsell. When you go in the training in the stock program, that's an upsell because they're going to get a matching set. So you got to get started on something, okay? Now, somebody's thinking, well, you know, I was only thinking about a couple of pants. Great. They're thinking two, you're thinking three to four. You with me? Okay. So what are two or three items that you know you use at least once a week? Got it? Get them to make those little buying decisions. Buying decisions, ladies and gentlemen, is like a snowball. One buying decisions leads to an next. You're going to see that. Once somebody makes a decision, that's the time that you can upsell, Okay. So um, uh, <clears throat> once they choose one or two, you show them the next, the, you know, the best value in the set where they're gonna get these gifts, okay? How you group their choices is saucepan, skillet, and roaster, okay? So usually most people need one or two saucepans, one or two skillets, and at least one roaster, right? So you're helping just with that statement because it's true, it's small, medium, large. That's what we're trying to do is we're trying to guide people and keep it really simple, okay? Choose the right size tool for the job. Okay, and you can always upgrade later. So how do we show value in the sets? Well, a chef set, 22,000 versus 12,000, a savings of $10,000. You with me? Talk about how much money you save, okay? Total gift value, that electric skillet, that MP5, that BPIC, that's $2,800 in added free. You're saving 10,000, you're getting $2,800. Get excited about the savings and the free because that's the only way they're going to get excited, okay? The monthly investment, we're talking 150 bucks, guys. Your cell phone is probably around that price. You know, and really when we break it down, the ridiculous, that's like $5 a day. Five bucks is affordable to anybody that eats. Notice how we have ridiculous statements, right? So when we assume the sale, ladies and gentlemen, when people give you the buying signs and they answer positively to your trial closing questions, assume they're going to get it. Your certainty will nudge them down the right path. Okay. Uh, here's a nice assuming the sales statement. You like it. You need it. 
you can't afford not to have it. Right? I can tell by, you know, that what you've been saying and what you've been doing, I know you like the product. Right? And we all need health and nutrition and we don't need that nasty stuff coming out of our cookware. Right? And we can't afford not to cook any other way. Okay, all that is a certainty sale, assuming the sale. Okay, pull out the order form, order blank question. Okay, they choose a set, they choose a gift, they choose a meth payment, say, great, let's do the paperwork. Write that down. Let's do the paperwork, virtual or otherwise. You go, great, let's do the paperwork. Let me show you what you're gonna have again here. Okay, they give you an objection, show them the set again, show them the gifts again, get confirmation of the method of payment, set gifts method of payment. But start writing. How do you spell your last name? What's today's date? Ask a question and fill out the order form. Okay. And what's your address here again? They're giving you the answer and they're seeing you filling it up. Another close is the assumptive close. You give them an order form and a pen. You just go, great. Just put today's date, your name and address on the top here. And don't, and, and hold the pen till they grab it. Okay. So um, that's the ultimate assumptive. And shake their hand. Roll the hand at 45 degrees. Look them in the eye smile and say welcome to the salad master family let's try that okay if there's a dog a cat a child or a spouse near you turn to them smile and say welcome to the salad master family turn your hand 45 degrees so it's welcoming you don't want to do this you don't want to do this okay you want to do it 45 degrees welcome open and say what welcome to the family big smile come on i want to see a bigger smile welcome to the salad master family I know it sounds corny, but you know what? It, it, it's a feel-good statement. So let's talk about the, the top objections. Uh, it's a lot of money. can't afford it. Wrong timing. I just spent money. Uh, Got to think about it. We never buy on a whim. We want to do research first. Uh, have to make sure they're all the right pieces. I don't cook that much yet. We eat out most of the time. Um, uh, I already have a good set. Uh, I have to talk to my husband. Uh, I want to pay cash. I don't like interest. I don't have credit and I want a better deal. Okay, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, they all boil down to money. Okay, so these are really the only common concerns you're going to get. Okay, so let's talk about on a virtual show, the top up to objections. I want to think about it. Once again, usually because you haven't trial closed early and often and you haven't spent enough time building rapport and understanding their beliefs and their values at the beginning of the show. Okay, so once you find that, you can integrate it back towards them. Okay, next concern on virtual, I'd like to taste the food. You can eliminate that objection. Okay, I know some people, I listen to their demo and they talk, oh, the food's so delicious, you got to taste it. Well, you're telling me you got to taste it, but I can't taste it. Versus you say, you know what, the reason why so many people are getting it because of the clean metal, because it seals in the flavor, the flavors are phenomenal. You're going to love it. Assume they're going to love it. Okay. And they need to know the sizes of the pans. They go, well, I, I can't make a decision on $5,000 if I don't know what it looks. Great, let's go in the cupboards. Let's open up your cupboards, get your camera going. Let's check it out. Let's do this together, okay? So when we're talking about objections, ladies and gentlemen, really it's about being flexible with your options. Closing is about flexibility. It's about going over, it's going under, going around, okay? Most people, they're afraid to make a bad decision. Write that down. What causes people to procrastinate? Fear, right? And people get analysis paralysis. Okay, why, why, why are they afraid to make a decision? Because they, they have made a decision before in the past that wasn't the right decision, okay? And so what you need to do is give them confidence that this is the best decision that they've ever made. And by the way, you know what? If it's not your personal testimony, you can read testimonies of people that own the cookware for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. They're all over the internet, okay? When you get an objection, the first thing that we recommend you do is to ignore it at the end, all right? Ignore it, okay? Uh, if you've answered the concern already before, you challenge it. For example, okay, right? A good ignore, uh, a good ignore is when somebody says, I want to think about it. You just go, great, well, okay, so you like the pro set, you like this gift, you ignore that, okay? Challenge an objection, say, somebody at the beginning, they say, I don't really cook, and then you... You cook the dinner. You say, isn't that easy? Yeah. Can you see how you cook more? Yes. You see how you'd eat out less? Yes. Can you see why so many? So you've already, they've already answered that. And if they go, oh, I don't cook that much. Say earlier, Mary, were you sincere when you said that you would save time? And you know you would cook this way. You just still are going to eat out at restaurants, but you're going to eat out less, right? 
So answer, right? It's not about the answer. It's about the procedure. It's about the system of how you answer. It's called LaRoc. LaRoc. Excuse me, my French is not great. L-E-R-A-C. LaRoc. Here's what LaRoc stands for, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. How you answer the objections, more important than the actual words, is listen. Don't interrupt them. So important. Right? You're thinking, but a lot of times the biggest problem people have is they got this dialogue going in their head and they're thinking about what am I going to say? And they interrupt the people and they go, yeah, but okay, listen, empathize. When you're listening to people, really try to understand and feel how they feel. Take a breath and then repeat, answer, close, repeat nicely. Okay. So, you know, repeat might be say, so, so when you say, you know, that uh, it's a lot of money, that you say it's a lot of money. And they go, yeah, you know, it's a lot of money. Blah, 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 blah. And what they end up saying is, you know, we just went on this trip and we racked our credit card and you were really not, we said we weren't going to get him any more debt. Blah, blah. So that's the answer. So the real objection comes up. Answer it. Tell a story. Tell a story and reiterate why it's so important to get it now. Tell a story. Tell a story. Tell a story. Your answer is a story. It's your story. It's, it's one of your team member stories. It's another customer story. So it's so easy, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about selling, just share stories, but follow, be empathetic, listen to them, repeat, and make sure you're answering the right objection, because sometimes people jump on it, and that's not the real answer. It's not the real objection. And after you answer the question, you close, and the close is a call to action to order. A close is confirmation of the set, confirmation of the gift, confirmation of the method of payment. Remember, set, gift, method, payment. Don't ask a question you don't know the answer to because you've already gone through this. They already said, I like the pro set. I want the electric skill. I'm going to do monthly. So what you're doing is, is you're just repeating it. So you wanted the pro set, right? Yeah, this is what it looks like. And you want to get the electric skill for free, right? Yeah. And you wanted to use a monthly. Fantastic. Let's do the paperwork. Okay. Always answer a question with a closing question. He or she who asked the last questions main control of the conversation. If you want to take any courses in negotiation, listen, okay? And after you answer, listen and maybe ask a question, but after you answer the question, ask another question. You control the conversation and you keep the conversation going. So when somebody says about money, what do you do? Do you, do you ignore it? Do you challenge it or do you answer it? Okay, well, you know, um, uh, let's just assume that you didn't answer it already. So you can isolate. So money, what do you mean the money? And they go, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you answer it, recap the value. Again, talk about their hot button, right? What's most important to them and extend it over a lifetime. Imagine that you're gonna get all this delicious food every day you eat for the rest of your life. Recap it over a lifetime. Tell your personal story. I know how you feel. You know, when we seen this, it was only one of us working, you know, and we were thinking about the money, but it truly, it um, after we've got it, it's the most important decision we've ever made. Okay, build, okay? Say, listen. If this is a concern for you, what else is a concern for you? You know, if you want to change, you have to make a change. And we we're talking about financing. If you're concerned about $100 a month, let me tell you, you need to take a look at this business. Worst case scenario, do the matching set program. Worst case scenario, get a legitimate tax benefit. Okay. And suggest a downsell. Listen, if you're really concerned, get the smaller set. Doesn't matter to me. You can always upgrade later. You see how we do that? Don't just go to the smaller set. Hold the value of the set. Tell the story, right? Offer them opportunity with the stock program and the tax benefits before you down sell. And then, of course, close. Set gift method of payment. Do you, are you learning something? It's a system, ladies and gentlemen. It's nothing mystical about it. Now, all you got to do is integrate with your study buddy. Review your powerful notes, okay? So you're getting here. I want to think about it, okay? I want to think about it isn't a real objection. It's a smoke screen for... Okay, it's a lot of money. Or in other words, they don't see the full value yet. Okay, um, I can't afford to buy. Is it real or is it psychological? If you're in a beautiful home, they got beautiful, expensive cars outside and they say they can't afford, you have to ask yourself, did I explain it in their eyes? Did I cost justify? Did I price condition? Did I build value? Okay, uh, it's not the right time. So you can see if somebody wants to think about it, maybe they have bad credit. Right, but you don't ever leave the home when somebody says, I want to think about it. Always ask if there was one thing, if there was one thing causing you to hesitate, it, what might it be? Zip and listen. They're going to give you the, the real objection. Okay, so if there's one thing causing you to hesitate, may I ask what it is? Well, let me tell you. 
Okay. Get rid of that objection. So five reasons why buy now. Okay, we're down to the last 15 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna ask for each and every one of you to open your mind even wider. Open it like a parachute so it absorbs even more, okay? Do understand, ladies and gentlemen, every time you do a demo, there's two sales taking place. A customer is gonna sell you on why they need to think about it, or you're gonna sell them on why they need to get it now. That's it. There's two sales that are taking place. And if you don't get good, and answering, I want to think about it, you're going to leave a lot of your paycheck on the table. And there's going to be a lot of lies out there that wish they would have been changed. So when somebody says, I want to think about it, the reflex is five compelling reasons why you want to invest now. Just stack them. They're all, all great reasons. You just stack them. Okay. First call special. Re-explain it. The benefit of getting it today, you get that beautiful electric skill. And it doesn't it make sense to start betting thinning now, especially after you taste the food, especially after you've seen that nasty pot test. Okay. If you're going to do a cooking show, now I can come and service you on your show. And in front of your friends, you can be a pride. You can have the pride of ownership, right? And showing off your beautiful Oyas, your Maganda Calderos, right? And I'm in a very special contest. Do not underestimate the power of a contest. Those of you that have too much pride, swallow your pride. Okay. You are in a contest. I'm in a contest. We're all in a contest. Ask for the favor and ye shall receive. I'm not in a contest. I'm in a very special contest. I'm in a contest to go to Orlando. I'm in a contest to win a Tesla. I need your help. Please, if you're going to get it and you're thinking about getting it later, do whatever you like. But when you do get it now, not only do you benefit now, but you also help me in my contest. Okay? Don't use a contest close, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, you missed that. For those of you that turned your head, I'm gonna have to do that again. Okay, you ready for this? Oh, look at that. Origami, fly away. Let's do that one more time. Origami, fly away. Woohoo! I know you like that one, entertaining. So uh, telephone close. When's the last time you, you did an intentional telephone close? A telephone close needs to be set up. Commit before you call, okay? If I could show you a way to get the cookware without interest for six months. If I could show you how you could get both the electric skillet and the rice cooker, would you consider getting it today? If I could, would you? If I could show you how you could get both of these items today, would you consider getting your set? Okay, well, let me call my distributor. Let me call my dealer. Let me call my trainer and see what we can do. If I could, would you? Don't just call and blindly put them on speakerphone because you're going to blindside them, okay? Hi, James. This is, uh, this is Teresa calling to register my show. I have a couple, uh, Bing and Bong, who are interested in getting a set, but they do have some concerns. I was wondering if you might be able to help, okay? I have this wonderful couple. They love the professional set, but they wanted to get a gift for free, and I know it's more, so I had to see if there's any possible way they really, really want it, and they're thinking about coming to Open a House to learn more about the free set, the matching set program, Okay. Isolate the objection. Sometimes, okay, the boss is gonna say blah, 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 blah on the phone. And then you're gonna say, if we could, would you? Okay, so my boss wants to know if we could give you both of these items, that's $2,300 and you would use the monthly plan? Yes, and you would go ahead today? Yes. So you just reiterate the answers you already know. You already got that information. You just summarize it, okay? So you can do an option where you can actually pass the phone to the boss or do a speaker phone. We've done closes that way sometimes. If some, a person is very new, sometimes it's easier to do it that way. Now, service after the sale. Ladies and gentlemen, understand you sell your service. Your service can be more powerful than product. That's your commitment to help them. Write that down. You can close as long as you're willing to back your words with action, right? Letting people know that, listen, this is just the beginning of the journey. When you get your cookware, I am your coach, your guide. We're on this journey together. You with me? Okay, we do the install. We go over burning, sticking, cleaning, and cooking eggs, okay? We invite them to the next cooking class, the next cooking class, the next cooking class, right? At least three cooking classes. Telephone coach, do, do a FaceTime or whatever. If you're not, uh, internet uh, reference. Now, listen, whether they buy or they not, you want to follow up with facts, links, videos, and testimonies. A pro is in constant communication after the sale. It's called the sale after the sale, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, if you want to have higher level of satisfaction, because this is what happens over time. Okay, they forget the longer it waits, right? The memory declines, emotion declines, 
We want to keep that information in front of them, especially if they're a potential team member. We want to keep them hot and excited about the business. eBay sweep, obviously, we bring that up in advance. Okay. Uh, sale is not complete until it's signed, approved, verified, delivered. Rescission days have passed and the customer is happy. Okay. So that's when the sale is complete because a happy customer gives more referrals and wants to join the business. So let's talk about our assignment, ladies and gentlemen. This is really exciting. Number one, role play with a study buddy once a week for the next month. You're going to go, when am I going to find the time? Well, I'll tell you something. You can do twice as many dinners to get the results or half as many dinners to get the results. The choice is yours. There's choices and there's consequences, right? So role play. I'm not your babysitter, ladies and gentlemen. You're in business for yourself. You're the president of your own company. The only question is, is how much you want to get paid? Do you deserve a raise? Okay, there's very few people that are presidents and CEOs that don't have education. This is life skills education. You're not going to get this in college. There's people that are PhDs, ladies and gentlemen. You can earn more than a person with a doctorate or PhD in your second year in this business if you really go for it. Okay, be a student. See, the power of role playing is you listen, you speak, and you give feedback. Review your notes within 24 hours, within seven days, within a month in six months. That's going to fully integrate. So remember and apply the knowledge. I'm going to challenge each and every one of you. Knowing is only part of the equation. Now you want to apply it. Okay. Go out there and cook. Why three times a week? So that you can average one life changed a week consistency. The key to success in any business, ladies and gentlemen, is consistency over time. It is indeed a fact. And so um, we've got a couple little things to close on here. I wanted to congratulate each and every one of you for successfully surviving and sur thriving. Okay. Some of you just woke up. I see the cameras come back on. Okay. Cause you're going, Oh, there's, there's a gift. I got to make sure that they know I'm engaged here. Right. Okay. So um, uh, before we do, uh, wrap this thing up, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to ask for uh, a couple, one thing you learned, I'm going to pick on a couple people, but I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to do a sneak peek of what we're going to email out to you. I think you're going to be excited about this one. This is your opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, opportunity of a lifetime. Okay. All right. So what we have is all 10 of those objections down, handling objections, closing the sale, where you're going to have the summary close, where you choose a set, choose a gift, choose a method of payment. You role play that one. You're going to deal with the five compelling reasons why by now to obliterate, I want to think about it, okay? You're going to also get the, 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 the popular clothes now about escrow. I like it, but I'm, I'm looking at buying a house. I'm looking at refinancing. Um, I can't afford it this time. So it's a timing issue, what to say, what to do. Registering the show, the next time you call out to your distributor or your dealer, do it professionally, set it up properly. Somebody actually says I, uh, it's a lot of money or it's too much money. What to say, condition these. I wouldn't use all those pieces. Some of you may have seen this before. Maybe the wife wants it, the husband's holding back or vice versa. Um, somebody says, I don't cook, which is not true. Everybody cooks, it's how much they cook, okay? I'm too old. When somebody says they're too old, I'm saying, I know you are, so am I, but you still eat and so do I, okay? And then uh, we have, uh, you know, I already have a set of salad masks. I already have a uh, waterless cookware. Um, oh, the interest is too high. Um, uh, I have bad credit. Okay. Um, uh, and then of course the sale after the sale to keep them excited. Um, and what happens if the customer did not purchase? How do we follow them up? Okay. Uh, sweeping the internet, being excellent at that. And of course, plugging the business. You always plug the business as a sale after the sale if you're a true professional. So I'm looking at some of the, uh, once you discover the problem, make a note and, and suggest a solution. We are, thank you very much, Luis. We are in making recommendations and suggestions, okay? Um, thank you very much, James. The check is in the mail. You're welcome. I'll type in my address into the chat box. I take denominations of $100 bills. It's okay to send cash. Okay, so a um, uh, couple, uh, couple little debriefs here. We're going to open up to the full screen. All right, so. I'm going to pick on raise your hand, okay? Uh, since Guy won something, I'm going to ask Guy to unmute. One thing you learned, Guy. One thing you learned here. Yeah. Uh, price conditioning. Price conditioning. Okay, I like that. Okay. 
All right, uh, very good. And by the way, enjoy your kitchen cheers. We'll be mailing those out. I'm gonna get Jorge and Isabel. Jorge and Isabel, okay. Um, uh, uh, Teresa, we'll move the spotlight, thank you. Jorge, there you are. One thing you learned tonight. Are you unmuted? Thank you, Teresa. There we go. Um, you know what, way back at the beginning, um, when you were when you laid out the high probability and low probability, boy, is that something I I really need to take to heart. Uh huh. And you know, it's it's not about discriminating; it's about coaching to be in front of the right people. Ask, mm -hmm. ask, and you shall receive. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on Bart Hall just because his, he's just like don't pick me. He's sitting in the back. He's like, please don't pick me. Don't pick me. Okay, Bart. One thing you learn. You're still muted. Sean O, I'm going to pick on you next. Uh, we want to unmute Bart. Teresa, thank you. I was praying you would pick on me, James, <laughs> because I want to know how many times again you need to say, don't you see why so many people are investing in Salad Master? Yeah, they think they think that you're like a broken record. I say, <laughs> I say three times. They go, didn't you say that? And I'm going, yeah, everyone's saying it. <laughs> Doesn't it make sense? Like, why wouldn't you want to click on anything else? You just make it so obvious that they're like, ah, I guess, yeah. Right? <laughs> the power of the assumptive. Very good. Excellent. Sean O, oh, one thing. One thing you learned here tonight. Teresa, if you can unmute Sean. Hi, Sean, James. you're on. All right, one of the things I learned today is uh, persuasion um, rules. Um, I, I value that a lot. Uh, I mean, you, you have to, you know, I, I myself have to sell myself, you know, to uh, persuade uh, other people to actually purchase it. So if I don't understand it, if I don't love it myself, then how am I going to persuade other people to purchase it? Beautiful. I am sold myself, right? You know, when I when I got Salamander, I didn't cook. I, I wasn't a cook. And so I wasn't the best cook. So that was a challenge for me. I had to force my kind of get, I enjoy cooking, but I didn't cook. And so we all have our learning curves in there. So to go with your study buddy, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't have a study buddy, take action tonight, text up, meet somebody and, and really start integrating this information because if it's all up in your head and you're not using it, it's way too valuable. I want to thank everyone uh, for your commitment to excellence. And before we wrap this up, Teresa, let's spin the magical wheel of prizes. We're going to give away an oval baked dish. Three prizes today. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. here with us uh, okay rose is with us here today ro can you type uh can you type into the chat box to what dealership you are from okay teresa will get that one thank everyone for taking the time see you at the top two weeks from now we have the final one and that's building this is my very favorite all-time best ever okay so we build it up to a crescendo it all comes together because the pinnacle of this business ladies and gentlemen is you can get anything you want in life as long as you help enough other people get what they want I salute you. You're all champions and achievers. We'll see you at the top of the Salad Master food chain.